In this video, we will go over problem number six from the 1999 AP Calculus exam. The setup here mostly just describes what we see in the picture, except we are also told that point Q has coordinates W, 0. So let's add that in. And we are told that the point R has coordinates K, 0. So let's add that in as well. Part A says find the value of k when w is equal to 3. So if w is equal to 3, then that means that point P is 3 comma something. Let's find the y value. When w equals 3, the y value will be 1 over 3 squared. In other words, the y value will be 1 over 9. So therefore, the point P is the point 3 comma 1 ninth. So how do we find the value of k? My strategy will be to find an equation of line L. If I find the equation, I can use it to find the value of k. I always like to use point slope form, which looks like this. This reminds me that all I have to do is find a point and the slope. Well, guess what? We already found a point. It's 3 comma 1 over 9, the point of tangency. So now all we need is the slope of this tangent line. And we know that the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. The curve shown is y equals 1 over x squared. I'm going to rewrite that as y equals x to the negative 2 power. So y prime, using the power rule, will be negative 2 x to the negative 3 power. In other words, y prime is equal to negative 2 over x to the third power. The derivative will give me the slope of the curve at any x value. We need the slope at the point of tangency, so we need the slope when x is equal to 3. So that will be negative 2 over 3 to the third power. So the slope of line L at point P is negative 2 over 27. Now we have a point and the slope, so we should be able to write the equation of the tangent line. y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. This is the equation of the tangent line. But remember, we need to find the value of k. So let's plug in the point k comma 0. In other words, let's substitute k for x and 0 for y. So now we have this k is the only variable, so we should be able to solve for k. Let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal to get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply by uh, 27 over negative 2 on both sides of the equation. On the right side, the 27 and the negative 2 cancels out, and we just have k minus 3. On the left side, we disregard the 0, and we have this. Adding 3 to both sides, we have this. So this is a valid expression for k. And for a free response question, you can leave your answer like this. When I'm practicing, I always like to go ahead and simplify, because what if this was a multiple choice question? But I want to emphasize that this is an acceptable answer on a free response question. So let's simplify. A negative times a negative is a positive. So forget about that. 9 goes into 27 three times. So we have 3 over 2 plus 3 is equal to k. Like denominators. So we have 3 over 2 plus 6 over 2 is equal to k, so 9 over 2 is equal to k. And if this were a multiple choice question, 
This is what you would find among the answer choices. Part B says find K in terms of W. So I'm really going to do the same thing again, but with more variables. Remember from the setup that if point P has an X value of W, then the Y value will automatically be 1 over W squared. So these are the coordinates of point P. In part A, we found that y prime is equal to negative 2 over x to the third power. So y prime, when x is equal to w, will be negative 2 over w to the third power. So this is the slope of line L at w. Now that we have a point and the slope, we can write the equation of line L in point-slope form. So y minus y1 will be y minus 1 over w squared is equal to the slope, which is negative 2 over w cubed times x minus x1, or x minus w. But don't forget, we are trying to find k. So let's plug in the point k comma 0. In other words, we will put in k for x and 0 for y. So we have this. Now we just need to solve for k. In other words, we have to get k by itself. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of negative 2 over w to the third power. So I'm going to multiply both sides by w to the third power over negative 2. On the left side, we can disregard the 0. So we have w to the third power over negative 2 times negative 1 over w squared. On the right-hand side, these fractions cancel each other out, and we just have k minus w. Adding w to both sides, we get this ugly expression for k. This is an acceptable answer for a free response question, but let's go ahead and practice simplifying just in case we run into a multiple choice question. W squared cancels out two of these w's and just leaves w. Also, a negative times a negative is a positive. So on the left side, we just have w over 2 plus w is equal to k. We need like denominators in order to add these together. So that gives us w plus 2w over 2 is equal to k. These are like terms, so 3w over 2 is equal to k. So on a multiple choice question, you would probably see k equals 3 halves w. Part C. Suppose that W is increasing at the constant rate of 7 units per second. When W equals 5, what is the rate of change of K with respect to time? When they say W is increasing at the constant rate of 7 units per second, they are giving us the change in W with respect to time. So the rate of change of W is 7 units per second. And this is at the moment of time when w is equal to 5. Given this information, we need to find the rate of change of k with respect to time. So we need to find dk dt. So this is a related rates problem, and we need a relationship between w and k. But in part b, we found this relationship. k is equal to 3 halves w. So if I want to find dk dt, I can just take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. The derivative of k with respect to t is just dk dt. When we take the derivative and there's a constant in the front, you can just bring down the constant and move on to take the derivative of whatever is left, but that will just be dw dt. 
at the moment in question, dw dt is 7. So that gives us dk dt is equal to 3 over 2 times 7, which equals 21 over 2. So this is the answer for part C. Part D, suppose that W is increasing at the constant rate of 7 units per second. When W equals 5, what is the rate of change of the area of triangle PQR with respect to time? Determine whether the area is increasing or decreasing at this instant. This yellow triangle is triangle PQR. We know that the formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. The base of this triangle is the distance from Q to R, but the x coordinates are K and W. So the length of QR will be K minus W. So that's the base. So now we have that the area is 1 half k minus w. We just need an expression for the height. Well, the height of the triangle will just be the y value of point p. And the y value is 1 over w squared. So we will put 1 over w squared right here. And this is the formula for the area of this triangle. Let's copy that down in our workspace. So here is our area formula. And we are also told that W is increasing at a constant rate of 7 units per second. In other words, DW DT is equal to 7 units per second. When W equals 5, what is the rate of change of the area with respect to time? So we need to find DA dt, the rate of change of the area with respect to time. We also need to determine whether the area is increasing or decreasing. Ultimately, we will need to find the derivative of the area so we can find dA dt. But right now, I think we have too many variables. So let's use the fact that in part b, we found that k is equal to 3 halves w. Let's make that substitution so we will have one fewer variable. Now we have this. Let's simplify inside the parentheses a little bit. We will need like denominators, so let's make this 2w over 2. Combining these fractions, we have 3w minus 2w over 2. But 3w minus 2w is just w. Well, let's see. In the denominator, we have 2 times 2. So we're going to have 1 over 4. The w in the numerator cancels out one of the w's in the denominator. So we still have a single w left in the denominator. So this is our expression for area. But you know what, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit as 1 fourth w to the negative 1 power. If we sort of bring the w up to the numerator, we have this. Now we take the derivative with respect to time on both sides. So I will do d dt on the left and d dt on the right. So on the left, this is just dA dt. On the right, when you take the derivative and there is a constant in the front, you can just bring down the constant and then move on to taking the derivative of what comes next. So I'm going to have to do the chain rule. I will, uh, using the power rule, I will bring the negative to the front, which I'll actually put uh, in the very front and I will reduce this exponent by 1. So I have w to the negative 2 power. But because I am taking the derivative with respect to time, but this is a w and not a t, I need to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of this inner function. In other words, dw dt. 
because of the negative exponent, I'm going to drop this w squared down to the denominator. So I will have negative 1 over 4 w squared times dw dt. Now let's evaluate dA dt when w equals 5. And there it is. But we also already know dw dt. Let's look back at our little inventory. dw dt is equal to 7. So let's just replace dw dt with 7. This is an acceptable answer for a free response question, but let's go ahead and simplify because that's pretty easy to do and we will be prepared for a multiple choice question. 5 squared is 25. 4 times 25 is 100. So I'm going to have 100 in the denominator. This is like having 7 over 1. And 7 times 1 is 7, so we have 7 hundredths. So the rate of change of the area is negative 7 over 100. And we can tell that the area is decreasing because dA dt is negative.